Pretty simple. Um, you can do this at home very easily. We have an asparagus puree. I cook it with a little bit of heavy cream and then puree it. And so we're going to put that down. Okay, next we have a sweet fennel puree. Cooked the same way. A little bit of heavy cream and then just puree it. Okay. Okay, so the fish is ready to be flipped. You're going to see a nice Oh, nice color there. Yeah, nice crisp crust on the outside. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take our risotto, put it in the center of the plate here, and then we take our we take our halibut right on top there. And I like to garnish it with a little bit of a sweet potato, fried sweet potato. Jason, this looks delicious. I got to try it out. Man, that fish just really flakes off nice. And then try the sauce. That is so good. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, I know we're using halibut for this dish, and it's perfect. But is this one of those dishes that you could do other fish with? Yeah, so you can do this with mahi, yellowtail, rockfish. Um, it just halibut is something that's uh, fresh and local right now. and. Um, a lot, of, a lot of guys are catching the halibut right, right. now, and uh, but when you know, I mean, it's this is a great preparation for for pretty much any fish. I mean, absolutely. Where can they find out more about you? So we have a website in Contro North Park. Uh, has a quick little video. Check out our video. Um, again, North Park is the hub of San Diego's beer uh, community. So we have 160 breweries here. There's a brewery down the street. A Every around. corner. Yeah, we deliver to the breweries. Um, so it's perfect. You have a couple beers. You know, you have a nice meal before you go on your on your trip, um, and then when you get off your trip, come talk to me and and tell me how it is. And and uh, if the fish processor doesn't uh, take care of your fish, I will. <laughs> yeah. Well, let's get back on the water and show you more exciting action right here on Sport Fishing. <laughs> Here we go. This is ridiculous fishing. Pretty, pretty crazy. Hi everybody, I wanna tell you about a brand new app that we just added to our website where you can watch our programs 24 seven, all our brand new HD content. There's no contract, just go to the website and sign up. And remember, you'll be watching our brand new episodes a week to two weeks before your friends. Looking to improve your fishing skills? Or just want to have a fun day out in the water with the family or with the client? Book a private charter with Dan Hernandez. He can take you on a local half day trip or over to Catalina Island or even offshore for marlin and tuna. Book your charter today with Dan and find out all you need to know about catching fish here in Southern California. Call our office or visit our website at dhfishingadventures.com. Hey guys, I want to tell you about a tool made by Boomerang, the Super Snip. Works out really good. All the years I've been fishing, I've never had a tool like this that works so great for cutting spectra, mono, fluorocarbon. It makes it really clean cuts and really nice, easy to use. The retractable on it is amazing. It's the best tool I've ever used in all the years I've been fishing. This is Dan Hernandez inviting you to join me every Tuesday and Thursday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time on YouTube Live. Let's talk fishing 
every Tuesday and Thursday night at 7 p.m. I'll see you there. This is Dan Hernandez inviting you to join us next week as we show you part two of our awesome fishing trip up here aboard the New Huck Finn out of Emeryville. So make plans to join us next week, same time, same station, for more stripers, more halibut, right here aboard the New Huck Finn on Sport. I'll see you then. Hi, I'm Ryan Dolan, CEO of Dolan Auto Group. We're proud to support the youth in our community through the Driving Brighter Futures campaign and encourage our youth to pursue the path that best fits the future they desire. What made me choose this path compared to a four-year traditional college experience was having this opportunity to go through a more condensed program and have a career that I could be proud of. I just love the idea of taking care of people, just being there for them. I do walk out of here knowing that I help someone. Our community's youth is our future. When injured in an accident, our job isn't just to be your lawyer. We move money from the insurance company directly into your pocket. We turn injuries into cash. Go lightly in Vanna, 222-3333. Watch high school baseball on Champion Chevrolet's High School Grand Slam, presented by America First Credit Union. Tune in Friday at 7 on Nevada Sportsnet. You're watching NSN with Chris Murray. Oh, orange concentrates. Oh, Tom, here's a banana. Thanks. You are with your bank. Welcome into the broadcast booth here at Bacoli Park. Don Marchand filling in for John Ramey with some help from Zach Bash this weekend, former pitcher here at the University of Nevada. Side armor, submariner. Who was here when Zach was pitching? I, I, I remember the approach. I remember the. Uh, what, how did you like pitching at Bacoli Park? What was your experience like here? <laughs> it's like pitching for the Colorado Rockies, is what you're telling me? That and clean up for your Wolfpack, the designated hitter, number three, Taylor Holder. See, and I mentioned this in right last night's broadcast, that I thought that this field plays Bryce a little bit different Matthews. now, plays a little bit bigger than when you were here. When you were here, and the, the use of the bats that were being used at that point in time, this was a launching pad for many of the games at Bacoli Park, both for the Wolfpack and for teams coming in and playing the Wolfpack. Third baseman, number 14, Derek Tenney. Batting eighth, center fielder, number 28, Josh Kanakutan. Batting ninth, the catcher, number 18, Jake Harvey. Yep, and again, talking with uh, Coach McKinley in the pregame show, he told us, he said, you know, the wind is blowing out today. It's not as stiff as it was during BP, but as I mentioned to him, the ball was jumping off the bat to left field, so we might see some home runs hit in this ball game today here at Bacoli Park. We're going to have the national anthem for you, and then we'll come back and reintroduce you to the starting lineups on the TV side of things, as we did on the radio side of things a moment ago. But first, our national anthem prior to today's game between Nevada and UNLV. Hey, Pack fans, Renown Health is hiring people like you. There are clinical, non clinical, and entry level roles. training and advancement opportunities, and terrific benefits and compensation. So, make your move. Apply today at renown.org slash careers. The reigning champs are making another run for the cup. Score! Starting now, every minute counts. Philadelphia scores! 
The Vegas Golden Knights host the Columbus Blue Jackets. Coverage starts tonight at 7, only on NSN. Walk MS returns to Northern Nevada. On April 13th, join us at Wingfield Park to rally for those affected by multiple sclerosis. Registration opens up at 8.30 and the race begins at 10 with food and fun for the whole family at the finish line. MS stops people from moving and you can help make sure it doesn't. <laughs> On a windy, blustery day at the Coley Park, the Wolfpack get set to take on the Rebels of UNLV. Glad you could be along today. Our first pitch temperature, we get a look at, it says it's 46 degrees outside, Zach, but with the wind, it says it feels like 39. Just another day for baseball in northern Nevada, right? <laughs> for baseball, period, yeah. Let's take a look at the starting lineup first for the Rebels from UNLV offensively. This is the way they will hit. The lineup turned in by Stan Stolte in his eighth year as the head coach at the Rebel program. Ryland Charles will lead off and play center field. J.P. Heft is the second baseman. Isaac Rodriguez will play third and hit third. Kate Higgins is in right field. He'll hit cleanup. Austin Krizik is the first baseman. He's going to hit fifth. Parker Schmidt, the DH, hit sixth. Santino Panaro will play left field and hit seventh. Bailey Seeger will do the catching and hit eighth. And Brendan O'Sullivan will play short. He will hit ninth. On the hill for the Wolfpack today will be Theo Millis. We'll get to his numbers in just a moment. Offensively for the Wolfpack, it's Jesse Pierce leading off, playing first. Michael Ball at second, hitting second. J.R. Freevy in left field, hitting third. Taylor Holder, Holder will do the DHing today. He's going to hit cleanup. Bryce Matthews in right field hits fifth. Justin Akal will play shortstop and hit sixth. Derek Tenney is at third base hitting seventh. Josh Katakutan is in center field hitting eighth. And Jake Harvey will do the catching on the hill for the Rebels. We'll see him in the bottom of the first inning. It'll be Sam Simon. But for the Wolfpack, it's going to be Theo Millis getting the start this afternoon. And for Millis, 1-0 with a 1-8-9 ERA. Just 19 innings pitched so far. He's given up 19 hits in those 19 innings. He has 17 strikeouts and four walks. And opponents are hitting 268 against the Nevada starter today. You've met all the key figures. We'd like to welcome aboard our TV broadcast and our TV audience. Nevada Sports Network, the Mountain West Network, joining us here for a simulcast from Pacoli Park this afternoon, as well as our flagship station for Wolfpack Baseball here in northern Nevada, AM 630 KPLY. Our engineer at our flagship station, Sean Powers, this afternoon. First pitch on the way is a fastball. That's going to be called a strike, and we are underway at 2.06 this afternoon. Again, with a game-time first pitch temperature of 46 degrees. The 0-1 swung on and missed by Ryland Charles. And Charles quickly down in the count 0-2, and, and Nevada will put a infield shift on him as the shortstop. A call moves over to the second base side of second, and he's right there to make the play. That was a perfect shift put on at a perfect time. Got a lot of information available out there now in the college game. It's certainly even 10 or 15 years ago. Second base man, the number five, J.P. So we're on a little bit of a shift, and Charles hit right into it. You wonder how many base hits are taken away by the shift. I think at the major league level it took a ton of hits away. First pitch, fastball taken for a strike by J.P. Heft. I've seen teams actually bring sometimes in outfielders in from the outfield to play infield and have six infielders or a five behind the pitcher. Yeah, those late inning situations where you, know, you can leave the game on a sack fly, so catching a fly ball doesn't really help you. Swing and a miss, and Theo Millis has gone straight strike so far in the ball game. Here comes the 0-2, or 1-2 rather. That one's just off the outside corner, so I guess he did miss along the way there. 2-2 two and two is the count. Just underway from Piccoli Park, one out. Here's the pitch, swing and a miss. Down on strikes goes J.P. Heft, and Millis comes out. 
throwing strikes early and getting a couple of very quick outs. And Isaac Rodriguez, the third baseman, will come to the plate. Rodriguez in last night's game, one for four with a single in the first inning. He was stranded at first after Cade Higgins grounded out to end the inning. First pitch by Millis, fouled straight back. Wolfpack going to wear their home white pinstripe jerseys today. I like this look. Nevada across the front with their numbers on the front and back in blue. For the Rebels, they're going to go with a gray uniform, gray top and bottom in this one, not the pinstripes like last night. There's a ground ball slowly rolled up the third baseline foul. And the count 0-2. Yeah, both clubs with an alternate. Nevada with an alternate white. Uh, this is a traditional white, but alternate to last night's jersey. And the family of Nevada for UNLV is breaking out an alternate gray. So both teams white, gray, two days in a row, but variations on the team. That ball fouled again by Rodriguez at the plate. How many uniform combinations did you have when you got to play here? I, I just feel like we had home and road. <laughs> just one, one, one for home, one for road, yeah. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I know. Here comes the 0-2 to Rodriguez with two outs. There's a ground ball to the shortstop, a call. He'll gobble it up, throw across the infield, and Theo Millis has himself a 1-2-3 top half of the first inning. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on base. We go to the bottom of the first in a scoreless game. You're listening and watching to Wolfback Baseball right here from Learfield Sports. Dear sports fans, clear. Okay, let's do some math. One, huge selection. Two, no dealer markups. Three, lower taxes. Four, 65 miles to savings. You don't have to be a mathematician to see these numbers add up to Wild West Chevrolet being the smart choice. What's your number? Check us out online or in Earrington. The average cost of hearing aids is nearly $5,000. But now you can buy a full pair of rechargeable, wireless, nearly invisible, easy to use, and comfortable hearing devices for only $99. But only from Audion. It's easy to use. They're small. A pair of $99 Audion Atoms can be sold over the phone without having to see a doctor or audiologist. Call to order. 1-800-211-4395. Back to Don Weir Field at Piccoli Park. Rebels go quietly in the top half of the first inning, 1-2-3, so that'll bring Nevada to the plate. They will face Sam Simon this afternoon, a 6'3", 200-pound junior from Centennial High School in Las Vegas. For Simon this year, he's got a record of 1-1 with a 334 ERA, making his sixth appearance. All have been in the starting role. He's pitched 29 and two-thirds innings. In that time, has given up 28 hits, 15 runs, but only 11 of the 15 have been earned. Opponents are hitting 246 against Sam Simon. Leading off for your University of Nevada. Wolf It'll be Jesse Pierce, Michael Ball, and J.R. Freedy do up for the Wolfpack here in the top half of the first Pierce. inning, looking to get off to a quick start in this one. Your umpiring crew this afternoon, they made a reverse rotation on us, Zach. Normally what happens, and I just say this normally, umpire crews, the home plate guy will move to third base the next day. Third goes to second, second to first, first comes to the plate. They went the other direction with our crew for this weekend. 1-0 pitch is low to Pierce, count 2-0. and So Harrison Silverman, who was working third base last night, will call balls and strikes. Heath Jones is down at first. Tyler Schmidt out at second, and Michael Goble is working third today. 2-0 pitch. Just misses off the outside corner, and Pierce ahead 3-0. and Maybe you know this, Don, as you, as you umpiring chop, but is that a sign by the conference, the rotation, or do those or do the crew chief decide that on site? I think the crew chief probably assigns it on site. Oh, boy, that's... That outside corner, non-existent for Sam Simon right now, and he's actually looking in. It's Harrison Silverman saying, is, is there a corner on that plate? Four-pitch walk to Jesse Pierce to start the bottom of the first. Yeah, it could have been, and my guess is that Keith Jones is probably the crew chief here. He's been around for a very long time, very experienced umpire, a guy that's worked the College World Series before. 
and he probably got together with the crew and said, hey, this is going to be our rotation for this weekend. So, yeah, I've just never seen him go the opposite direction of what the rotation normally is. There's a sharp ground ball wide of third. I know in three-man crews, third base is called the rocking chair because you just don't get a lot of work. You move on every pitch at third base, but you don't get as much work as the home plate guy or the first base guy. Here's a 1-1 pitch to ball. That one's low and away. Count two and one. Uh, you're going to – I'm going to learn something new again today, which I said. He's got a stopwatch, doesn't he? Yes, it's – is that the pitch clock? Ah, interesting. Okay. Uh-oh, look out. Ooh, close – a couple of close plays over at first on Jesse Pierce. He's thrown over twice, Simon has, and that one was pretty close. It's not the old rocking chair. We actually have the remote. You sit in the rocking chair with the remote. That's kind of the rocking chair. There's a line drive to left field. That one's going to get down. Michael Ball will have a single. That will move Pierce into second. And Nevada's got something going here in the bottom half of the first inning of a scoreless ball game. Ball picked up a double in last night's game. One for four with a sacrifice. Sacrifice to home a run with a fly ball to left field in the seventh inning last night. And Ball off and running in this one with a single. And here is J.R. Freethy, the left fielder. That one hit high in the air to right field. Cade Higgins drifting over, and now it'll be the center fielder, Charles, who will make the catch. Tagging from second and heading for third is Jesse Pierce. He will make it easily, and Nevada's got a potential run just 90 feet away on the fly ball to center field off the bat of Freedy. Yeah. Yep, exactly right. Taylor Higgins will dig in with a 354 batting average. Throw to first, back in safely is ball. Hey, you keep throwing over there, you're going to throw it away. For Holder. 11 RBI on the season, trying to pick up number 12 right here. Swings and fouls the first pitch. 0-1 the count. Checking Michael Ball's base-stealing prowess. He's 0-4 for 4 this year in that category. You're thinking he might take off and try to get 90 feet closer to the plate. He stays put, and the pitch is hitting the center field. That should be deep enough, and it's going to go over the head of Charles. He started in. And got fooled. One run scores. Around third comes ball, but then they will hold him up. An RBI double for Taylor Holder. And the pack is on top, one to nothing. Right fielder, number 24, Bryce Matthews. It, it was, but I also believe, Zach, that I'm not sure that he, had he just turned and ran, I'm not sure that he had caught up to it. It was hit that well. Ground ball to the right side will play to run. Coming home from third is ball. Bryce Matthews will ground out but pick up an RBI, and the Wolfpack grabs a 2 nothing lead here in the bottom of the first inning. Shortstop, number one, Justin Akaw. Over to third goes Holder. So he's a bit closer to home plate. A pass ball could potentially make Nevada a 3 nothing leader here in the bottom of the first inning. Justin Akaw will dig in the shortstop. Call hitting 239. That pitch is taken for a strike. He was one for four in last night's game with a double. A run scored, strikeout looking, and a couple of pop-outs. 
That fastball is a strike about thigh high on the outside corner. And a call down in the count 0 and 2. Here's the pitch. Did he check his swing? Yes, he did, according to Heath Jones down at first. Just a bit off the outside corner. A call with 10 ribbies on the season. Looking for number 11 with Holder down at third base and two outs here in the bottom of the first. That one is a waste pitch on the 1 2, threw it high and outside. Hoping that a call would chase after that one, but. Nothing doing. Two to the count on Justin. The pitch. Ground ball to the right side. That'll be knocked down by the second baseman. Thrown to first just in time to get Justin a call by a half a step. JP Heft is able to reset and make the throw to first to get the out for the Wolfpack. A couple of runs on two hits. There were no errors and one runner left on base. We go to the second. Pack leading it 2 to nothing. You're listening to Wolfpack Baseball from their field sports. Hey, Wolf. This is the first new ad Bradley Drenlin Janae has made in about two years. Instead of filming new ads, we've been doing what we do best, representing our clients after a life-changing accident or injury. And they need us working on their cases, not new commercials. So that's what we decided to film. Your work is more important than this. Bradley Drenlin Janae, the number one law firm for people who want to be treated like they're number one. Spring into savings all month long at Michael Hole Chevrolet GMC. Spring is the perfect time to trade in the old for a fresh new ride. And we've got the deals and trade-in values to make it happen. Right now, save up to $10,000 off MSRP on new 2024 Chevy Silverado 1500s. Or save up to $10,000 off MSRP on new 2024 GMC Sierra 1500s. For Northern Nevada's best deals on new trucks, spring into savings at Michael Hole Chevrolet GMC in Carson City. Shop online at michaelholegm.com. One. We return to Piccoli Park with the Wolfpack on top by a score of two to nothing to start the second inning. Theo Millis at a very effective top half of the first. Three up, three down. Got Ryland Charles to ground out to the shortstop Justin a call. Struck out JP Hep. And then Isaac Rodriguez grounded out to a call for a one, two, three inning for Theo Millis. It will be four, five, and six due up for the Rebels here in the top of the second inning. Cade Higgins, Austin Krizik, and Parker Schmidt. Here's the left-handed hitting right fielder, Cade Higgins. First pitch low and inside for ball one. Higgins hit cleanup last night, went 0 for 4 with a couple of ground outs to the second baseman ball. Strikeout looking and a fly out to left field. That pitch is high and outside. And Millis falls behind in the count 2 0 oh here on Higgins. Here's a sharp shot snagged by the second baseman ball. What a play. Playing short right field on the shift. And he's able to extend and take a base hit away from Cade Higgins. Number 47, Austin Kruzak. Ball full extension to his right. Gained a little bit of ground where he was positioned. But that's he lists Higgins at 5'10", and he used all of that 5'10", all that one, and I'm with you. I didn't realize, I didn't look up quick enough to see that they had the shift on because I thought that's a line drive easily into right field. The 1-0 pitch is a strike on the outside corner to Austin Krizik, the first baseman. Jason Doktorzik was able to do something last night with Higgins, or with Krizik rather, that not many pitchers this year have been able to do, and that is strike out this young man. Austin Krizik, one of the harder hitters in college baseball to strike out. Here comes a 2-1 pitch. There's not much up strike zone today and not much on the outside corner either. That pitch is ruled high in the count is 3-1. and one. But Krizik coming into last night's game in 71 at-bats had only struck out four times. Last night in four at-bats, he struck out twice. That pitch is taken for a strike, and the count is full at 3-2. and two. Theo Millis winds and delivers. Low and outside for ball four. So, Krizik 
on base for the first time in this series. Hitter, number four, Parker Smith. Let me take that back. He struck out twice in single last night, so he did get a base hit. So this is the second time he's been on base in this series, that being Austin Krizik, the first baseman. Here's Parker Schmidt, the DH. That one is ruled a ball. Here comes a 1-0. That one's way high and inside, and the count is 2-0. If you're a Kansas Jayhawk basketball fan, I want to turn your radio off for a half a second. I'm going to give you the score of their game against Gonzaga right now. Kansas led that game at the half by one. There's a ground ball to the third baseman. Tenney goes to second for one on the first, and they erase the walk with a 5-4-3 double play. When I come back, I'll give you that Kansas score so you have a little bit of time to catch your breath. For the Rebels here in the second inning, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left on base. We will go to the bottom of the second. Pack leads it by a score of 2 to nothing. You're listening and watching Wolfpack Baseball from Learfield Sports. Pavers by Porter is unmatched in quality design, installation, and maintenance of interlocking pavers. We build your vision for your home or commercial locations. Call for a free estimate. Pavers by Porter, creating your dreamscape since 2007. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Hmm. Imagine all the slopes you'll conquer. Sick. Imagine all the sights you'll see. Wow. Whoa. Okay, how about you imagine dropping me off? <laughs> Right now, get 1.99% APR financing for up to 48 months on a new 2024 Toyota Tundra. Or get $1,500 cash back on Tundra. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Pavers by Porter is unmatched in quality design, installation, and maintenance of interlocking pavers. We build your vision for your home or commercial locations. Call for a free estimate. Pavers by Porter, creating your dreamscape since 2007. Four, three, one. Back to McCauley Park. 2 nothing Nevada as we get set to start the bottom half of the second inning. Nice double play turn by the Wolfpack around the horn. 5-4-3. I think I actually said 6-4-3. My mistake. 5-4-3 double play around the horn. For the Wolfpack, they will send up 7-8-9 here to start the second. Derek Tenney, Josh Katakutan, and then Jake Harvey. First pitch, ruled a strike. Well, we were just told by one Woody Berry that the man that will be honored here at Bacoli Park tomorrow has actually gotten into town a little bit early coming down from Oregon, and that being former University of Nevada head baseball coach Gary Powers. So we might get Gary Powers on the air here shortly. So we hope that he's able to come by and we'll visit with him. They're going to retire Gary Powers, number 17, tomorrow at the ballpark. It is Gary Powers Day at the ballpark, which I think is awesome. Big big fan of that guy. 1-2 the count on Tenney. The pitch is low and outside. So we'll just stay tuned, stand by, and we'll see if Coach Powers is going to be able to come on by and say hi and visit with us here on the broadcast today. He might be a little bit busy tomorrow, which I, I suspect is going to be the case. 2-2 two, two pitches low, 3-2 and two the count. By the way, for you Kansas Jayhawk fans, minute 25 left in their game against the Gonzaga Bulldogs, and Gonzaga leads that game again. Kansas led at the half by one. You're probably not going to believe this score, but it is the truth as Tenney swings through a fastball for strike three. With a uh, minute 20 left, Gonzaga leads Kansas in the NCAA men's basketball tournament, 87-6-4. to four. The wheels have come off for the Jayhawks in the second half. Josh Katakutan is up for the Wolfpack, playing center field for Nevada. And pitches off the outside corner. Both pitchers in the game so far, Sam Simon for UNLV and Theo Millis for the Wolfpack, have each collected a strikeout and a walk in this contest. There's a strike taken by Katakutan. Josh in last night's game, one for four. That one's fouled at the plate. Actually, one for three. Had a sacrifice bunt in his first at bat. This Wolfpack team does take pride in bunting, or at least being ready to bunt when they need to, because 
I mentioned it last night that along with their batting practice where they can get in the cage and, you know, they work on things there, but they also have a, a bunting station set up down the first baseline where the young men will go over and practice their bunting after they swing in the cage. There's a ground ball left side picked up by Rodriguez, the third baseman, and throw it first will be in time. Two are out against the Wolfpack here in the bottom of the second inning. They lead this game two to nothing. Catcher number 18, Jake Harvey. Jake Harvey will come to the plate. Gary Powers, 937 wins in his 30 years with the Wolfpack in this program. And again, I think we're here today enjoying Wolfpack baseball at this very nice facility as that one is lifted to right field. Higgins going over. We'll get there and make the catch, and I'll conclude my thought when we come back about Gary Powers and how he kept this program alive when they wanted to cancel baseball at the University of Nevada. For Nevada in the second, no runs, no hits, no errors, and nobody left. We'll go to the top half of the third, Nevada on top, 2 nothing. You're watching and listening to Wolfpack Baseball from Learfield Sports. At the Joint Chiropractic, we believe that everyone should have access to high-quality, affordable chiropractic care. You are never too young or too old to start taking care of your body. Walk-ins are welcome at any of our five Northern Nevada locations for just $29, seven days a week. Plus, as a monthly member, you can get treatment at any of our 900 nationwide locations. Stop living with pain. Try the Joint Chiropractic today and give your body the relief it needs. For all your body and paint repairs, turn to the champions. Champion Chevrolet's state-of-the-art collision center is a Class A body shop that offers free estimates. Our staff is experienced, professional, and factory trained. We guarantee all body shop and paint repairs for one year and provide a written lifetime workmanship warranty. Plus, we're proud to be an iCar Gold certified shop. For quality body and paint repairs, see the professionals at Champion Chevrolet Collision Center. Wolfpack with two hits in the first inning, two runs. They lead it two to nothing as we start the third inning. Theo Millis back on the hill will face seven, eight, and nine for the Rebels. Here to start the third inning. Millis has actually had a couple of one, two, three innings to start this game. Had a clean first inning, retiring the three batters he faced. Start the second inning at a line out to second base by Cade Higgins. Austin Krizik walked, but then Nevada turned a 5 4 3 double play to end that frame. Square to bunt. The pitch is taken low and inside for ball one. Santino Panaro, the hitter for UNLV. Left-handed hitter. Takes that pitch high and inside. And the count 2-0. and Panaro, a junior out of Bishop Gorman High School in Las Vegas. Where there have been some athletes that have come out of that institution. That pitch is taken for a strike. And the count 2-1. and one. A lot of people think football when you say Bishop Gorman. They, they're a powerhouse and have been for years. The 2-1. That one's going to be low and inside, and the count runs to 3-1. and one. I got a chance to see them last year in the state tournament game. And they look like a junior college team. High strike taken, and the count fills at 3-2. and two. I mean, at a high school level, I'm saying they look like a junior college team at a high school level because they, they got some athletes. 3-2 pitch to Panaro. That's low and inside for ball four. Second walk issued by Theo Millis. Stolte does a great job down there with getting a lot of local Southern Nevada. Catcher number come 20. Play at, uh, Baby UNLV. We were talking before the game about Bryson Stott of the Phillies played his college ball at UNLV, and he was uh, grew up in Vegas and stayed close to home. That was a big get for Stan. Stan in his eighth year at the helm of the Rebel program. He's actually been there for 13 Took over that job on an interim basis, 2016, and then got the full-time job in the offseason. Of course, fans here in northern Nevada are familiar with Stan. There's another hard shot to third. They go to second for one, on to first, and Tenney again starts a 5-4-3 double play to wipe out the walk. 
Boy, that ball was sizzled his way. Number nine, Brendan right O'Sullivan. Down, I'm right, Adam. Easy turn once you make that play. So made that, it look easy. Yeah, yeah made, it, yeah, made it look easy. The hot corner. Easy for us to say. Yeah. Last year, the Rebels finished 21 and 30 overall in the league. They were 12 and 18 in the conference, which was good for a sixth place finish. That pitch taken for a strike by Brendan O'Sullivan. And Stan, in his eighth year, his overall record there, 204 and 205. Pitch low and away. Count evens at one and one. We like Stan, but we hope he stays <laughs> below 500 this weekend. You re- I didn't want to say it, so thank you. <laughs> The 1-1 one, one popped up and out of play back to the right. No, I, I thought that when I saw that note. I'm like, okay, I've I got to give that note. Do I follow that up with? No, yeah. He'd understand. Stan was here a long time with Gary Powers. Speaking of Gary Powers, Stan was his assistant. Stan was the pitching coach and recruiting coordinator here. That ball bounced foul up the third baseline off the bat of Brendan O'Sullivan, and the count is 1-2. Stan was the recruiting coordinator here and pitching coach for Gary. He and Jay Ullman were here a long time coaching under Coach Powers. That fastball will miss the outside corner in the count even at 2-2. Two and two. Yeah, they talk about those coaching trees, you know, in the NFL. And, yep. And obviously Stan at UNLV and Jay's having to go a bit down at Tulane as a yep. coach. So a couple of big-time programs by some former Powers assistants. 2-2 two, two the count on O'Sullivan, the pitch. When well, that one crossed up the catcher, Harvey, and he was looking for something else. He almost wore that pitch. He was, yeah. That was one of those where he dropped it, and it was a pretty close pitch, but once you drop it, it's a little, a little hard for the umpire to call that a strike. I don't know. That, that was too far off the plate, though. And Harvey looking over to the dugout like, well, what did you call, and <laughs> what was he supposed to throw? Here comes a 3-2. Popped out of play foul. You mentioned Jay Ullman at Tulane. I believe, now I haven't looked at their coaching roster, but uh, a former player here at the University of Nevada is one of his assistants, Justin Bridgman. I believe Justin's still working for Jay. 3-2 pitch. Ground ball to the left side. Tenney with a short hop pick. Throw across the body in time. And a 1-2-3 inning again for Theo Millis. He has faced the minimum through three. No runs, no hits, no errors. Nobody left on. We'll go to the bottom of the third pack, leading it 2 to nothing. You're listening and watching Wolfpack Baseball from Learfield Sports. We've been in the biggest little city since its very beginning. We brought clean water to our city's first buildings and homes, when that wasn't easy to do. As our city has grown, we've grown with it. Since 1893, we've been trusted to do the right things the right way. Whether it's delivering innovative ideas for the buildings, shaping our future, or making sure your leaky faucet leaks no more. That's the savage way, and it has been for over 130 years. Because car wrecks don't take the weekends off, neither do we. And don't wait until Monday to get the help you need now. At Lerner Row, we're available to take your call 24-7. And get you the help you need right now. Lerner and Row can get you more. Call 644-4444. Hi, I'm Joe Bradley of Bradley Drenle and Janae, and we're proud to support Friday Night Rivals right here on Nevada Sportsnet. Nevada Sportsnet is your home for high school sports. Or the third inning, bottom of the third. No, hold on just a second, Zach. We're switching some things up here in our mixer board. Sorry for the technical difficulties on your end. Now you should be there. Saving some people. (laughs) Now you're completely gone. There you go. Now you're on. That first pitch is taken for a strike by Wolfpack leadoff hitter Jesse Pierce. Those folks that tuned in to hear John are real disappointed now. They can't hear me. They can't hear you. They can't hear John. They're like, what happened? Okay, now I think we've got it straightened out. 
Well, I signed up for Ramey. I didn't sign up for these two guys. <laughs> that ball is grounded foul by the third. Jake McKinley, the head coach for the Wolfpack, tries to short hop and pick that one and unsuccessfully. We miss it, John. Some well-deserved time off for John Ramey. It's a long grind, football and basketball season together. That ball lifted into center, and Pierce will have a leadoff single for the Wolfpack here in the bottom of the third inning. Just one of those scheduling situations where you can't count on Nevada to lose that game on Thursday. You know, you got to have a backup plan or a, a plan B or whatever you want to call it. So John was scheduled off in case the pack advanced, and of course they did not, but here we are, Don and Zach. First pitch is low and outside to Michael Ball. Well, I was telling you before the game, because we were sitting here watching that Kansas-Gonzaga game, and I told Zach, I said, you know, I'm a formus, former Kansas broadcaster, and I had to tell the story that sometimes you need fill-ins, and that pitch is fouled by Ball. The count evens at one and one. I believe it was 2007 when Trent Johnson was a head coach for the Nevada basketball team. He scheduled a holiday tournament and asked Kansas if they'd like to come and play at Lawler Event Center in that tournament. Everybody pretty much figured it would be Kansas and Nevada in the championship game of that tournament, which it ended up being. And same type of thing. you got to schedule ahead, and Kansas's football team had been selected for a bowl game, and they didn't have anybody to come out here to Reno to call their games in that tournament. 1-1 pitch to ball. Grounded right side. That'll get through the right field. That's a single. Around second and stopping there is Pierce. So Nevada's got the first two runners on here in the bottom of the third inning, leading this game by a score of 2 to nothing. That'll bring up the number three hitter, J.R. Freethy. So back to Kansas. They called out here. They kind of knew I was the backup to Dan Gustin and said, hey, would you be interested in calling the Kansas games for us when they play in the tournament? And I'm like... Are you kidding me? I believe it was Bill Self's first year at Kansas. And they came out, and I got to be a Kansas Jayhawk broadcaster, which was very exciting. First pitch, strike to J.R. Freethy. He lined out to center field in his first at bat. I got that as uh, 2003, Don. Oh, it was three, okay. That's what I got here, yeah. Yep. And Nevada ended up beating Kansas in that championship game, by the way. There's a line drive. The right center field is going to drift back over towards center, and Charles will make the catch on any other day in this ballpark. That thing's one hopping the wall for a run, if not two. Yeah, that's the gapper 99 times out of 100. But that ball just held up and sliced. Again, that lefty kind of smooth lefty stroke you can imagine if you listen to the radio. Yeah, a little inside out, and it's going right at the W of Wolfpack in right center, and then it just kind of drifted right back over into Charles' glove without even really making much of an effort. I mean, Charles, when that ball was hit, was on a dead sprint to get to the gap because he thought it was going to the wall, and all of a sudden, boom, it bent right back over towards him. Here's the cleanup hitter, Taylor Holder. He'll take a strike. The count is 0-1. Nevada with two runs, four hits now in the ball game. UNLV, no runs, no hits th- so far. We're in the bottom of the third inning. Both back up by two. Here's a throw to first. and Simon is awfully wor- worried about Wolfpack base runners. We mentioned Ball, who's at first, and then when he got there in his first at bat in the first inning, he's 0 for 4 in stealing bases this year as Holder will... Foul that pitch out of play back over the top of the Wolfpack dugout and out of play. Kirk Snyder dropped 29 in that championship game against uh, Kansas Don. It's a pretty good, pretty good game. And I relate a story. I'll continue that after another throw to first. Somebody asked me because they, you know, they knew I called games for the Wolfpack and they said, there's no way you're not going to be a Wolfpack homer if the Wolfpack doesn't end up winning this game. And I said, nope, I'm, I'm a Kansas broadcaster. i gotta be, I got to be pro-Kansas this weekend. And somebody said, as that pitch is low and outside for ball one, one, and two, they said, what if the Wolfpack goes up by nine with a minute to play? How are you going to react calling the Kansas game? And I said, well, I'm going to be pro-Kansas. I'm going to be sad. I'm going to be upset that Kansas doesn't look like they're going to win. Here comes a 1-2. Oh, up and in, and that's going to catch Holder on the arm, and that'll load the bases for Bryce Matthews. So this is a true story. I'll never forget this. 
that with 103 left in the game, you mentioned Kirk Snyder, great player for Trent Johnson in the Wolfpack. He was on the left wing on the east side of the stadium and then on the court at Lower Vincent. And he put a move on his defender, went by him, and comes in, and it was like a Dr. J dunk. You remember the famous Dr. J dunk when he takes off from the left side and goes up and slams it with one hand. That's what Kirk Snyder did. Pitch to Matthews is on the inside corner for a strike. And I kid you not, 63 seconds left in the game that put Nevada up by nine. I can't make that up. I will always remember that. And they ended up beating Kansas in that game. Another pitch taken for a strike by Matthews. He's quickly down in the count 0-2. I could be getting my arena history wrong, which is very possible, but I'm pretty sure that the great uh, arena high big David Padgett went to Kansas. He was on that team. And I believe that that game was scheduled, or at least this is what I've heard. I don't know if it's true, but back then, I don't know how he's scheduling now, but it was kind of like a thank you for coming to Kansas. He was a big-time recruit, so they're yeah. like, they, they scheduled him a hometown game as like kind of a, you know, like a bonus for coming to play Kansas. So that's how it well, hold on just a second. That one lined in the left center field. Charles moving over is going to be Goes off his glove. The guy's going to score at least two. As Pierce comes home, Bell comes home. An RBI double, a two RBI I'm sure that's why they came here. You're absolutely correct. Here is Justin a call, first pitch swinging. That should get a run home. That will drive Higgins back in the gap. He'll make the catch. Tagging from third is Holder. He will score easily. In the third goes Matthews. And the bat has got a 5 to nothing lead here in the bottom of the third inning. It's too nice little be a ground up by Matthew. That's really good fundamental baseball by the pack to get those runners in before the bus two outs. I was searching for the word and you just brought it up. Fun good fundamental baseball. It's not small ball, it's just good fundamental baseball. First pitch taken by Derek Tenney for a strike. This will be the seventh hitter to come to the plate for the Wolf Pack here in the Bottom of the third inning, they've got five runs on five hits now. It's a breaking ball that catches the outside corner, and they count one and two. And Harrison Silverman getting some help from the crowd behind home plate. The 0-2 pitch, low and inside, one and two. Had a break in the action there momentarily. Kevin Higgins, the associate head coach for UNLV, went out to have a mound trip with Sam Simon in his infield. Here's the one two. There's a one hopper to the shortstop fielded by O'Sullivan. He will throw across, and what a beautiful pick by Krizik at first. That's the second time in this series we've seen Krizik with some nice glove work over there at first. For the Wolfpack, they pick up three runs on three hits. There were no errors, and one runner left on base. We will go to the top of the fourth inning. Nevada on top five to nothing. You're watching and listening to Wolfpack baseball from Learfield Sports. 
I'm Jared Lucas, all-conference guard for the Nevada Wolfpack basketball team. The grind of the basketball season is long, and being able to go with somebody that I trust, like Dr. Morgan Rivetti, can be essential in being able to be adjusted and, and go into a game and feel great and play at a high level. I come from a family of athletes, and treating our local athletes here in this community is something that's really important to our practice. For appointments, call Northwest Reno Chiropractic at 775-324-3700 or go to northwestrenochiropractic.com. When injured in an accident, seek justice, seek integrity, seek Nevada's trusted personal injury attorneys. Go lightly in Nevada, 222-3333. Credit reports and 24 7 credit alerts with your One Nevada account. Three. One. Back to Don Rear Field at the Coley Park, site of today's game two of this three game series between the Wolfpack and the Rebels of UNLV. The Rebels took the opener last night in 10 innings, 3 to 2. And we saw a dominating pitching performance for Jason Doktorsik. He went eight and two thirds, gave up seven hits in the two runs. They got the two runs in the ninth, did the Rebels last night to tie it at two. Doc Torzik struck out nine and did not walk a batter in last night's game. Had a strong outing, but Rebels caught up to him in the ninth inning and tied it and then won it in the tenth. First pitch is inside. From Theo Millis to the leadoff hitter, Rylan Charles. He had the big night, three for five. A couple of home runs in last night's game for Charles. The Bishop Minogue graduate getting a chance to come north here and play against the Wolf Pack. Here comes the 1-1. Ground ball foul. So when I say he had two home runs, if you weren't with us last night and early in this broadcast, one of his home runs went over the right field wall. That was to lead off the top of the ninth inning. And then in the tenth inning with two outs, he had a uh, lazy liner, I guess might be the best description. It wasn't hit that sharply, but hit it to right field. And Bryce Matthews coming in, dove head first to try to make the catch. It bounced in front of him, over him, and went all the way to the wall. That ball hit down the right field line. Trouble, and it is off the fence. And that'll be a stand-up double for Charles as he keeps it going here at Piccoli Park. Boy, that one, Wynn probably held that one from at least getting halfway up the fence. I think it hit at the base of the fence down there in the right field corner. Well struck. He went out and got that one, too. That looked like a pretty decent pitch, but Charles got it. There's a ground ball at the first baseman, fielded by Pierce. He'll go to the bag, unassisted, to retire Heft. Over to third goes Charles, and with one out, Rebels have a runner at third for Isaac Rodriguez. Yeah, I was curious with the ball down the line. We've seen a couple one, balls in the Isaac gap and a, a couple of fly balls to right, right center, but that one was more of a true line drive down the line. I was anxious as that was in the air. I'm like, this could go out. This could get <laughs> held up. This could go foul. I wasn't sure exactly what was going to happen, but kind of stayed true down the line and short hop the fence. And... That ball grounded to the shortstop. That'll get a run home as a call will throw to first, picked by Pierce. Scoring from third is Charles, and it's a 5-1 lead for the Wolfpack now here in the top half of the fourth inning with two outs. There's that fundamental baseball you talked about for the Wolfpack, Zach. Yeah, a little different when you're down 5-0. You, you want to score them in bunches, but a run's a run, so that'll work. And... Common to northern Nevada during baseball season, snowflakes have begun to fall at Bacoli Park. <laughs> Very light snow, but snow has begun to fall. And going into the bottom of the fourth inning, we are going to visit with the man that will be honored here tomorrow at Bacoli Park on Gary Powers Day. No, it's not Zach Bash. It is Gary Powers. And he has made his way to Bacoli Park, back to Bacoli Park. He's made his way to the booth, so we'll visit with Gary Powers when we get to the bottom of the fourth inning. I'm about 934 <laughs> wins short of uh, Gary's career mark. <laughs> Maybe one of these years I'll catch up. But 3-0 is groove for a strike. 
to Cade Higgins, the right fielder. He lined out to the second baseman ball in his first at bat in a play in which Nevada had the shift on, and Ball was playing almost a shallow right field and had to go to his right, reach up on that sharp line drive hit by, uh, hit by Higgins and was able to haul it in. 5-1 Nevada. They've out hit the Rebels now 5-1 as well. Here comes 3-2 pitch. That one hit in the air to left field. Look out. If that's fair, that might be gone. It is fair, and it is gone. Well, we figured we'd have some home runs in this game, and that one not necessarily a jet stream shot, but he got some help, and it, it went over the wall in left field. Yeah, off the bat on a normal day, it's maybe an in-betweener, but off the bat on a day like today, he hardly even got a effort from Freely out there. Just took about two steps and cleared the fence by a good 30 or 40 feet. For Cade Higgins, that'll be his second home run of the season. That'll make it 5-2 to two in favor of the Wolfpack. And that ball is fouled back and out of play. We're seeing this Rebel team that Jake McKinley described to us in yesterday's pregame show as a very offensive-minded team, a very aggressive offensive-minded team. We saw it in the ninth inning last night, and they seem to be having that approach here in the fourth inning in scoring two runs against Theo Millis. So you get on our TV side a good shot of Millis. There's a swing and a miss on a fastball up and in the zone. Something I'm certain Gary Powers did at this ballpark, just threw fastballs by guys like that. <laughs> we'll find that out here in a few minutes. There's a strike three called. Paints the outside corner for out number three. For the Rebels here in the fourth, they pick up a couple of runs on a couple of hits. There were no errors and nobody left on base. We go to the bottom of the fourth. When we come back, we're going to visit with Gary Powers. Stick with us. You're watching and listening to Wolfpack Baseball from Learfield Sports. Pavers by Porter is unmatched in quality design, installation, and maintenance of interlocking pavers. We build your vision for your home or commercial locations. Call for a free estimate. Pavers by Porter, creating your dreamscape since 2007. It's Champions Keep America Rolling Sales Event. With over $8 million of Nevada's sharpest selection of pre-owned inventory on sale. Like a 2018 Chevy Bolt, $330 a month. A 2021 Chevy Equinox, $375 a month. A 2017 Toyota Highlander, $427 a month. Or a 2020 Hyundai Palisade, $565 a month. Don't miss Champion Chevrolet's Keep America Rolling Sales Event. Pavers by Porter is unmatched in quality design, installation, and maintenance of interlocking pavers. We build your vision for your home or commercial locations. Call for a free estimate. Pavers by Porter, creating your dreamscape since 2007. Two, one. Back to McCauley Park as we head for the bottom of the fourth inning. And as promised, as advertised, we are visiting with the man that will be honored here at McCauley Park tomorrow, one Gary Powers. 30 years as the head coach here, 937 wins, coach. Welcome back. And I'm just going to say it because I think it's appropriately put to the house that you built here well, at the University it. of Nevada. It's good to be back. It, uh, I drove in here through the snow, and uh, so everything's normal. And, and I walk in here, and, and it's blowing about 35 miles an hour out to left field, so everything's still normal. <laughs> and, and as you got to the booth, the snowflakes started to fly. Now they've, they've subsided, but yes, as the first pitch to Josh Katakutan is grounded to the first baseman, Grizzik, who makes the play on one pitch, one out for the Wolfpack. Jake Harvey now up, the catcher for the Wolfpack. What's it? I mean, how long has it been since you've been in this park? I know you've been up in Oregon for a while, so it's been a while since you've it's been here. Been, it's been a few years. I've come back a couple of times and had an opportunity to come in and watch some games. And But the last four or five years, it's been tough because I've been pretty busy doing what I'm doing up there. Yep, yep. First pitch to Harvey is taken for a strike. Again, we are in the bottom of the fourth inning. One out, base is empty. 5-2, Wolfpack leading UNLV and visiting with Gary Powers. I've said this on the broadcast. We're here because... He, of you that we might not be playing baseball at Piccoli Park had you not kept this program alive for all those years because I know there was times when they were thinking yeah maybe baseball we don't need it as a, a sport here at the University of Nevada you proved them wrong well yeah but, but, you know through the efforts of uh, just persistence and trying to get a lot of people to understand the severity of the 
of the possibility, and they, they responded in the manner that we needed them to. And Northern Nevada is full of people like that, and as you see, as the growth of this program and the growth of the university has proven, uh, that was that was the way it was with baseball, you know, because we were probably six months away from losing it. It was close. Jake Harvey just struck out on a called strike, so back to the top of the order. That ball hit deep to left field by Jesse Pierce. The left fielder, Santino Panaro, just looks and watches it fly. And the Wolfpack has picked up their sixth run of the game. They now lead it 6-2. to two. That was a blast. That one didn't need any win behind that one, did it, Coach? I don't think so. You know, it was <laughs> off the bat. You could see that was gone. Jesse Pierce with his third run scored for the Wolfpack. He walked back in the first, scored a run. Single scored a run in the third and is now hit a solo home run with two outs here in the top half, or make it bottom half, of the fourth inning. This is a really tough day to pitch, to pitch here, you know, and you have to learn how to do it. Oh, yeah. Sure. I heard you talking to Zach, and Zach saying no day is a fun day to, <laughs> to pitch at McCoy Park. So you just, you know, he, he could do it. He's, he's being, he's being uh, very modest there. So he, he was one of the guys that we could rely on doing it. Michael Ball, two for two in this game with two runs scored. The top of the order has performed well for Nevada. That pitch misses inside, one and one the count. I th- I think, and maybe you can you can tell me because you built this ballpark and it was natural surface for all the years. The fence was not as high as it is now. As that ball grounded to the third baseman Rodriguez, his throw across the infield will be in time. We will continue this conversation, Coach, with you when we come back. Gary Powers visiting with us in the booth here at Bacoli Park. He'll be honored tomorrow here at Bacoli on Gary Powers Day. For the Wolfpack, a run on a hit, no errors, nobody left. We'll go to the fifth inning, Nevada on top now, 6-2. to two. You're watching and listening to Wolfpack Baseball from Learfield Sports. At the Joint Chiropractic, we believe that everyone should have access to high-quality, affordable chiropractic care. You are never too young or too old to start taking care of your body. Walk-ins are welcome at any of our five Northern Nevada locations for just $29, seven days a week. Plus, as a monthly member, you can get treatment at any of our 900 nationwide locations. Stop living with pain. Try the Joint Chiropractic today and give your body the relief it needs. For all your body and paint repairs, turn to the champions. Champion Chevrolet's state-of-the-art collision center is a Class A body shop that offers free estimates. Our staff is experienced, professional, and factory trained. We guarantee all body shop and paint repairs for one year and provide a written lifetime workmanship warranty. Plus, we're proud to be an iCar Gold certified shop. For quality body and paint repairs, see the professionals at Champion Chevrolet Collision Center. Three, two. Back to Coley Park as we get ready for the start of the fifth inning. 6-2 Nevada over the Rebels of UNLV. We are pleased to be joined by Nevada former, I almost just said it, Nevada head coach Gary Powers. It just becomes natural over an amount of time. Gary Powers spent 30 years at the helm of this program and collected 937 wins as that ball on one pitch is lifted into shallow center field. On comes Katakutan. He'll be there to make the catch for out number one. Coach, I was going to say the question I was going to ask you was about how this park plays. I thought when you were here it played much smaller than it does now, and it might be the technology of the bats, the the fences are higher. It's an artificial surface. I don't know whether that had anything to do with it, but do you think this park has changed over the years and how it plays? Well, definitely. You know, when when uh, when we had the, had the natural turf, you know, and we actually had grass here and uh, – the bats weren't restricted like they are now, uh, and the, and you did say that the, the, the fences were lower, so so it was a very very offensive park back then be, yeah. with, because of a lot of different things, but it it changed when we put the the field turf in, uh, and then we also raised the fences at the same time. There's a ground ball. Nevada's got the shift on, so so the shortstop, a call on the second base side of the bag will make the play for out number two. Yeah, but I I, I feel yeah, that sure. the the, the air was deadened when we put the uh, the first field turf in a lot. You know, I mean, I, they changed the dynamics, but at the same time, they changed the bats too. They mm-hmm. they put restrictions on the bats, so I think that has a lot to do with it. But on a day like today, it doesn't matter what this field is made out of. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking ball taken for a strike by Bailey Seeger. 6-2 Nevada leading it here in the top of the fifth inning. Two outs, bases empty. We're joined by Gary Powers. 
Want to get your tickets? Come on out. They're going to retire his number <clears> 17. <throat> I haven't heard. Are they hanging your jersey on the wall or painting? I hope they do. Uh, somewhere out there. I'm not necessarily sure what what's going on tomorrow. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I just they said to show up, so here I am. <laughs> there you are. Here you are. The one one <clears> pitch <throat> taken for a strike by Seeger. It's now two and two. So get your tickets. Come on out. Honor Gary Powers tomorrow again. Is really really kept this program afloat during his time as the head coach here. There's a deep fly ball to left center field. Does that one have enough? And it does. Third home run of the game hit. This one off the bat of Bailey Seeger, and it's now a 6-3 lead in favor of the Wolfpack as Seeger goes yard. That one might have had just enough wind help to get out of here. Well, you know, it, you know, if if you don't like to hit today in, in in this park, then you know you probably don't deserve to be playing. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's a matter of just shortening your swing and putting a good swing on it and making good contact, and you got a chance to hit the ball out of this park. And on, on, you know, you got to you got to pitch for nine innings. You got to play defense for every 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 pitch. You know, I mean, it's it's a tough. This is a tough day. For Seager, his third home run of the year. I want you to talk a little bit about the guy coaching in what we say the other dugout as that ball has popped up behind home plate. Let's see if Harvey's got a play. No, he will not. But the guy in charge of the Rebel program now, one Stan Stolte, who knew, you are very familiar with. Yeah, I was very fortunate to have a guy like Stan Stolte in, in, as my right-hand man here for 14 years. So uh, it was guys like him and John Savage and a lot of other assistant coaches that made us who we were during those days you know i mean you, you don't it's not a one-man show by any stretch of the imagination and if you don't have quality assistance and quality players you know you're not going to be around very long so i was fortunate very fortunate stan in his 14 years here coach helped you uh have 22 all-conference pitchers in his time here with you as his pitch as your pitching coach that speaks volumes about what he does because of what we've been talking about here about and Zach even saying how hard it is to pitch here, but there's a method you need to how you how you need to approach pitching in this ballpark. I'm going to get that when we come back. All right, fly ball to the second baseman. The ball will end the top of the fifth inning for the Rebels. They pick up a run on a hit on the solo home run by Bailey Seeger. We go to the bottom of the fifth. Nevada holds a 6-3 lead over UNLV. You're watching and listening to Wolfpack Baseball from Learfield Sports. This is the first new ad Bradley Drenlin Janae has made in about two years. Instead of filming new ads, we've been doing what we do best, representing our clients after a life-changing accident or injury. And they need us working on their cases, not new commercials. So that's what we decided to film. Your work is more important than this. Bradley Drenlin Janae, the number one law firm for people who want to be treated like they're number one. Okay, let's do some math. One, huge selection. Two, no dealer markups. Three, lower taxes. Four, 65 miles to savings. You don't have to be a mathematician to see these numbers add up to Wild West Chevrolet being the smart choice. What's your number? Check us out online or in Earrington. One. Boy, on our TV side of the broadcast, we've got a great shot from behind home plate. You see the clouds on our TV side of the broadcast out there beyond the left center field wall down south of town. It's snowing down there, <laughs> and it's snowing pretty good, isn't it, Coach? Well, we've seen snow in the infield and sunshine in the outfield here before, <laughs> so that doesn't surprise me. Gary Powers, uh, going to be Gary Powers Day at the ballpark tomorrow here at Piccoli Park. We invite you to come on out. Partake in the festivities as they honor Gary Powers, retire his number 17. As the snow, I said snow down south, and just as I say that, the flakes are getting a little bit bigger here at Piccoli Park. Well, America First is proud to back the pack and proud to be the Wolfpack and Nevada's premier credit union. Join the home team at your neighborhood branch or at AmericaFirst.com. J.R. Freethy has the count even on him at one and one after a swing and a miss. So, Coach, you said there's a method to pitching in this ballpark. No matter what the <clears throat> configurations are, what's the method to pitching in this park? Well, you see Stan doing it right now to, to JR here. You, you, you jam left-handed hitters. You don't let them 
Uh -oh. Go the other way. Yeah, he went the other way. Is that one going to get out? No, it's off the wall about four feet up. On his way to second is Freethe. He's got a stand-up double. You, you have to jam left-handed hitters. You cannot let the ball slide out over the plate like you just saw. And then against right-handed hitters, you just try to pound the outside part of the plate. And then, you know, conversely, your hitters, you know, you, you've got to get uh, your – left-handed hitters to understand what they're looking for right and right the right hand hitters you try to get them on the plate and make everything inside because that's what you want and if it's not inside you just you just don't want to go to right field on a day like today here is the cleanup hitter in the dh taylor holder first pitch is high and probably no one knows that better than the guy in that dugout you know, well, i was just gonna say yeah. but there's a there's a there's a one caveat that goes with that the guy in the mound's got to do it Yep, you there, know, yeah. and you just saw <laughs> what is. they were trying to do and what, what what was done are two different things. So you know, I mean, the theories are only as good as how you can apply them. That ball is fouled. This program has had now three different head coaches since you left, um, <clears throat> and now they've got Jake McKinley. Tell me a little bit about Jake. Tell our listeners, you know who Jake is and and where he's come from to get take over this program. He's in his second year here at Nevada, and I'll let you get to that after this pitch to Taylor Holder. Lined out of play, right field line. Jake, Tell us a little bit about know, Jake. Jake, Jake, Jake does it the right way. You know, he's got the right idea of how you need to go about doing what we're doing here and for the right reason. And, and uh, the one thing is that, that I've been very impressed with Jake and thankful for is he's kind of embraced and trying to embrace the history and the tradition of the program and the university itself. And I think that's very respectful of uh, his opportunity. And he he wasn't born with a silver spoon in his in his mouth. You know sure. what I mean? He came up the hard way, and he had to pay his dues. And he and he wasn't afraid to to be at a lesser level, you know, program to be able to do what he does. And then he was successful at it and got this opportunity. And and he's and he's handling it really really well. Two two pitch to Holder is low and outside to catch up in his at bat. Holder is one for one in the game, had an RBI double in the first, was hit by a pitch, scored a run in the third. Nevada leading this game 6-3. to three. I agree with you on all those points and everything that he's trying to do with this program. Here's the 3-2. There's a ground ball to the shortstop. They'll have a play at third. Here's the throw. It's in plenty of time as Freethe went on the pitch and on the ground ball, and he is thrown out at third for out number one. Yeah, so, you know, Jake, Jake is, is a good guy in that respect, and the one thing that – that I appreciate is uh, he, he calls me before every series. Really? Every weekend before the, every series, and we, we talk about the opponent. And oh, my goodness. We talk about what's going on in the conference and what's going on. So I, I like that because he keeps me abreast of what's going on in the program. So I appreciate that a lot. That's so fantastic. I've had more conversations with him this year than I you know I had for the last nine years sure. with the people before. and. Nothing, nothing against them. It's just that, that that's just who Jake is and what's important to him. So, I mean, I appreciate that a lot. And and he's trying to bring a lot of the traditions back. We talk about that all the time, you know. You you, you have informed him, don't bring in an umbrella to New Mexico. <laughs> the 0-1 pitch with a runner on the move is grounded to the first baseman. Up the second goes Holder on the fielder's choice. So he will move up. Matthews is retired, three unassisted. And with two outs, here comes Justin a call. I don't ever tell him what to do. <laughs> you know, I never, yeah. I never, I, I, I answer questions if I'm asked. Sure. And I ter certainly don't want to interject anything in, in, in unless I'm asked, you know, and uh, that's dual respect, I would think, you know, and that's what I try to do because I, I had my day and, and I want him to have his and I want it to be just as successful or even more so. Gary Powers, by the way, with us in the booth here. It's going to be Gary Powers Day tomorrow here at the ballpark. They will retire Gary's number. It'll be Gary Powers Day. So come on out tomorrow and enjoy some Wolfpack baseball. It'll be game three of this three-game series. Nevada trying to even the series at a game apiece after losing last night. 3-2 in ten innings. That ball fouled out of play by a call, and the count is 0-2. And Gary has made it to town safely here today from Oregon. Tell our listeners what what's got you occupied these days. Yeah, I, I, about five years ago, I had a, had a, an opportunity to help a family member out. Uh, 
take care of a vineyard, you know, when uh, my, my wife's uh, mother-in-law got sick and they lost their tasting room manager in their, in their vineyard, uh, I was asked to step in, so I've done that. A vineyard. Well, we're going to keep talking about that when we come back. A strikeout to Justin Nicole. Swings and misses. They throw him out at first. We have played five. Nevada leads at 6-3. You're watching and listening to Wolfpack Baseball from Learfield Sports. In northern Nevada, there's emergency care, then there's Renown ER, where every patient is seen by a board-certified emergency care physician, and you have critical access to the area's largest health network with more specialists, treatments, and services, including northern Nevada's only level two trauma center and pediatric trauma center. For more complete care when it's needed most, trust your emergency care to Renown ER in three convenient locations. I've seen it a thousand times. Insurance companies do everything they can to deny a claim. It's frustrating. That's why I made it easy. Text me anytime and get an answer. I'm local and have years of experience getting people like you fast and easy resolutions. Come join the team of champions. Two, one. We are back at Bacoli Park, Nevada, with a 6-3 lead as we start the sixth inning of this game. Whether it's a leaky faucet, backed up sink, or broken garbage disposal, NDI will complete the job with experience you can trust. Proud partner in Nevada Wolf Pack. First pitch to Ryland Charles is lined to left field and caught out there by J.R. Freethe. Well, he... he Ran that one down and had that one timed perfectly, did he not? Well, the Wolfpack guys should should know how to do this in this ballpark because it's you know it's, it's this way a lot, you know. So when you're practicing every day into it and stuff like that, you should you should you should be able to to do what he just did there. So you are <laughs> running a vineyard in Oregon right now. First pitch taken for a strike by J.P. Heft. Well, originally I was there to to help them with their tasting room. <laughs> which is just dealing with the public and and running the people that that uh, that actually work in the tasting room, which is pretty simple because it's kind of like this, you know. Yeah. And then uh, as my my father-in-law is 91 right now, so you know we're just happy that he's here and and he, again, he's at that stage now where he can't do what he needs to do in the vineyard. So now I'm trying to work with the uh, the, the our vineyard manager who's Hispanic, and so. I, you know, it, it's something I have to deal with every day. Sure. I'm learning every day. And, sure. You know, I'm, I'm glad I have him because he, he's he been working with Russ for 18 years. So it's uh, <laughs> he, he knows what needs to be done. I'm just having to communicate with him, which is not easy when I don't speak Sure, Spanish. absolutely, yeah. But uh, get him to understand that. Don't wait for Russ to tell you what to do now. <laughs> right. And don't look at me to ask, <laughs> ask me what to do. But. <laughs> Uh, so make sure we get what needs to be done done out there, you know. And so we have a good relation. I've, we laugh, and I have a good relation with him. So I'm learning every day, and and it's good because it keeps me going and gives me a purpose every day. And I and I'm helping a family the fam, the family out. So that's it's all positive. Fantastic. JP Heff, by the way, fouled one off his left foot, and the training staff for UNLV as well as head coach Dan Stolte <clears throat> had to come out and check on him. He looks like he's going to dig back in. In face an 0-2 pitch from Theo Millis. Here it is. Foul ball, or is it going to stay fair? It's on the left field line. Looks like it's in play. In foul territory, Derek Tenney will make the catch for out number two. So when you got the call that, uh, hey, we want you to come back, we're going to honor you, we're going to retire your number, what's your emotions when you hear that after spending all those years here in this park? Well, I'm very honored to have the opportunity to do that. You know, I mean, I... Uh, it's been 11 years going on 11 years, me not being here, you know, the, and, and so I'm just, you know, I'm thrilled for it and, uh, honored for it and kind of speechless really, you know, I mean, it's just, uh, it's how you, when you're not around it very often, sure. you know, and then all of a sudden you get back and say, well, I guess maybe they do remember me being there. Well, well, and I, and I said it at the beginning <clears throat> of this. When I heard this was going to happen, I said, this has been a long time coming. That's one person's opinion, but I'm pretty sure there's a lot of guys that uh, 
probably agree with that statement. This has been a long time coming for them to do this for you and make sure people know when they come into this ballpark that you're the guy that kept this thing alive in this park. Well, you know, I did that, you know, on a daily basis just because of everybody else, you know. I mean, that uh, I got a chance to play in this program, and so uh, I had a, I love for the school and the program sure. and the area, and so I was going to do everything I possibly could to do that. And then with the help of a lot of other people, uh, we had the opportunity to keep it going. So we just keep working every day to try to make that happen. And I was fortunate enough to, have, like I said earlier, to have a lot of good quality people around me and support. We are extremely proud to have you on the broadcast and extremely proud to see that program's going to retire that number 17 tomorrow. Nobody will wear it again here in the University of Nevada history. I think that's great. I appreciate that, Don. Thanks so much. Coach, if you're welcome, you're more than welcome. If you're not too busy tomorrow to come by and we'll visit with you again. I will try to do that. Head coach Gary Powers, former head coach in the Nevada Wolfpack, joining us. By the way, strikeout to Isaac Rodriguez ends the inning. We will go to the bottom of the sixth, Nevada leading at 6-3. You're watching and listening to Wolfpack Baseball here on Learfield Sports. This is a Bradley Drenlin Janae personal injury attorney. He's in his office right here in Reno. Unlike a lot of Vegas personal injury attorneys who say they have a Reno office, our attorneys actually live here. Nothing against Vegas, but we know Reno and how to win cases here better than any Vegas lawyer ever could. Bradley, Drenlin, Janae, the number one law firm for people who want to be treated like they're number one. Imagine yourself in a new Toyota. Yeah. Sick. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Right now, get 4.99% APR financing for up to 60 months on a new 2024 Toyota 4Runner or lease 4Runner for just $409 per month. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places. Park with Nevada leading by a score of six to three. They have out hit the Rebels seven to three. And our game today, the Silver State Series, is brought to you by America First, Nevada's premier credit union. Whatever financial goals you've set for yourself, your family, or your business, America First can help you achieve them. So become a member today at AmericaFirst.com. Former head coach at the University of Nevada, Gary Powers visiting with us for a few innings, and I told him if he wants to come back tomorrow, he's more than welcome to come on into this booth. There's a square to bunt and a pitch taken off the outside corner by Tinney. The count, by the way, 2-1 and one on Derek Tinney. Nevada's third baseman's made some fine plays at third base today, including that little pop-up in foul territory at the top half of this inning that I mentioned. The wind blowing, it's not easy to catch a pop-up in this park today, and Tinney made it look easy. He's also made a couple of nice plays on ground balls, has started a couple of 5-4-3 double plays. Count even on him now at 2-2 two and two with nobody out. Leadoff hitter here in the bottom of the sixth. Nevada looking again to even this series at a game apiece as a swing and a miss by Tenney. He'll go down. Fourth strikeout recorded by Sam Simon, the starter for UNLV this afternoon. And Josh Katakutan will come to the plate. He's 0 for 2. Simon has done a pretty good job against the bottom three in Nevada's lineup. They are collectively... 0 for 7 with three strikeouts. And rejoining us on the broadcast, one Zach Bash. Sorry to let everyone down. No, did, did, you, <laughs> did you go get a hot dog or anything during sitting, your break? sitting over in the press box catching up with Woody and Aaron. There's a fly ball to right center field. Is that one going to drift back over for Charles? It is. Charles on a dead sprint into the gap to right center field is able to run that down. Again, that's one of those balls on any other day. Well, I shouldn't say any other day here at Piccoli because this wind blows like this more often than it doesn't. But if that wind's not blowing, that's a double. That's an easy double in the gap. Yeah, I missed a couple of, well, I saw them, but I wasn't in here with you. A couple of uh, wind-aided bombs while I was away. Yeah. Seegers was definitely wind-aided. Pack's got a home run from Jesse Pierce. How about the day he's having? There's a strike taken by Jake Harvey. Pierce has been on base three times. He scored three runs with a home run, a single. He walked in the first and scored Nevada's first run of the afternoon. Here's the 0-1 to Harvey. Swing and a miss. Maybe a foul. 
Count quickly 0-2. Pierce, though, the young man out of Skyline College, originally out of Las Vegas, was not recruited by the Rebels and Stan Stolte, and Nevada's fortunate enough to have him here in Reno, and he's having a day against the Rebels. That pitch low and away, 1-2 and two to count on Harvey. Six seven and zero oh for the Wolfpack on your line score three three and zero oh for the Rebels. There's a ground ball to the third baseman Rodriguez. He knocks it down, picks it up, throws across the infield, and Krizik is making it look like it's not very hard to pick a ball out of the dirt. He's done it now with ease, and that's not an easy play. A one two three inning for Sam Simon. We will head for the top of the seventh inning. Nevada on top six three. You're watching and listening to Wolfpack baseball from Learfield Sports. Accidents happen, but when they impact your life, you need a team that understands. Get the justice you deserve. We are real lawyers for real people just like you. Go lightly in Vanna, 222-3333. I'm Jack Stanko with Champion Chevrolet, and we're proud to support live high school sports all year long on Friday Night Rivals. Watch right here on Nevada Sportsnet. NSN is your home for Wolfpack baseball and softball. Two, one. Back to the Coley Park. Our game today is brought to you by Camelot Party Rentals. They make it great so you can celebrate with the best selection of rental equipment for weddings and special events. Camelot Party Rentals, proud supporter of the Nevada Wolf Pack. I need to give credit where credit is due, and thanks to Zach Bash, he informed me that that play at third to end this last half inning was not made by Isaac Rodriguez. Instead, it was made by Chase Dittmar, who has come into the Rebel lineup. He is playing third. Rodriguez has moved over to second, and Dittmar has taken the spot of J.P. Heft in the number two spot in the lineup offensively. First pitch, line drive right at the third baseman to Tenney, and he easily hauls that one in. A very soft line drive, and... Tenney, who was well off the line at third as they had the shift on to the right side of the infield, was in his tracks and made that catch easily. So, Zach, the last at bat in the two hole probably was Dittmar, was it not? Or did he just come in defensively? Or no, I think I, I'm pretty sure that was Heft that okay. fouled the ball off his foot. Yes, or, it was. Yeah, You're right. And they probably yeah. took him out. Maybe he had a little swelling or something. Good Did, point. Didn't uh, sit well with the training staff, is my guess. That pitch is low and away to the number five hitter, Austin Krizik. Krizik has walked and struck out in this game. And again, Krizik, not a guy that is easy to strike out or doesn't strike out as he hammers that one to left field. And another run put on the board as Krizik unloads a deep fly ball over the wall and left, and it is 6-4 Nevada. Wow. Gary Power said on the broadcast, Zach, if you don't like hitting on a day like today, might not want to be in the lineup. <laughs> you just got to put a good swing on it, get it in the air, and we see what – now, that one wasn't aid winded. That, was, that ball was crushed. That was crushed. That was crushed. I think it looked a little more majestic with the win, but that, that probably goes out on just about any day here. Three home runs for the Rebels in today's game. They had two last night, both by the leadoff hitter, Ryland Charles. Parker Schmidt will take a strike. For the Rebels on the year, that is now their 20th home run on the season. Nevada's got one home run. They also have 20 home runs on the season. Ball fouled out of play by Schmidt, and the count is 0-2 on the Rebels' designated hitter today. That one's fouled straight back. By the way, to the young man who texted in to say, tell coach, I said, howdy. There's a lot of guys in this town that are call Gary Powers coach because they played for him. <laughs> CP. He's yep. CP. 
That one down the first baseline foul territory. Oh, what a catch by the first baseman, Pierce. Has to go up on the fence down there on the padding after he makes the catch, but what a nice play by Nevada's first baseman. Coach was just CP for me. When I got here as a senior transfer, it was like CP, CP. And I'm like, who is CP? I'm like, isn't the guy's name Gary? And it's just CP. It's <laughs> yeah. Coach Powers. Coach That's Powers. Just CP is, yep. is just, he was just CP. By the way, that was my brother who texted me that was watching right. today's broadcast locally here on Nevada Sportsnet. Is he pitched for Gary up here? Is that right? Yep. Came out of Columbia Basin College up in Washington and came here and pitched. 6-4 is our score. Nevada holding on to a two-run lead here as we play in the top of the seventh inning. Two outs and a home run across. Austin Krizik hit a bomb over the left field wall. There's a ground ball left side. No shortstop there as Nevada had the shift on. A call was on the second base side of the bag, so Panaro will pick up a two-out single to get Bailey Seeger to the plate. He's got a home run in today's game, a solo shot in the fifth inning. We didn't have the feed on next door. Uh, what um, what I miss for Coach? What, any uh, words of wisdom? Or he's, I assume he's excited for uh, he, tomorrow's ceremony. He's very excited. He's, he said it's it's nice to be recognized and he's honored. And I said, you know, I told him, I said. I say this as a guy that worked with him for all those years that I think it's long overdue that this honor has come and is going to be bestowed upon him. And I said, I think there's a lot of people in this community that feel the same way. So uh, it's, it's very nice. They're going to, again, they're going to honor Gary Powers by retiring his number 17. Coached here for 30 years, accumulated 937 wins as the head coach at the university. Took him to the regional playoffs, I believe, three or four times. Can't remember which number. I went to all of them, so I should know. A couple times at Stanford, one time to Austin, Texas. I can remember that Austin, Texas regional for this reason, this reason only. Pac is actually playing Texas, and it's a night game, and it got started late, as a lot of those tournament games do. At 11 o'clock at night on their scoreboard in Austin, they had the temperature and the humidity on the scoreboard. It was 90% humidity and 95 degrees at 11 o'clock at night in Austin, Texas. That'll get you. It was awful. Swing and a miss by Bailey Seeger. The count is 0-1. Had a trip to the mound, by the way, by the Wolfpack's pitching coach. and Mark Moriarty came, uh, Moriarty rather, came out and wanted to visit with his starter, Theo Millis. A lot of years back then when Nevada was independent, right? Were there several years where there was no conference, no automatic bid, no conference tournament, things like that? Yep. Good fastball by Millis. That's a strike and a count 0-2 on Seeger. Yeah, there was one year, and I can't remember the record. I wish I had it in front of me, but Nevada had some crazy, silly record, and I believe they were undefeated here at home in that year and got passed over because they were an independent. Swing and a miss on a breaking pitch by Millis to Seeger, and that'll do it for the Rebels here in the top of the seventh inning. They pick up a run on two hits. There were no errors and one runner left on base. Take your seventh inning stretch. Wolfpack leads it by a score of 6-4. to four. You're watching and listening to Wolfpack Baseball from Learfield Sports. Hi, Dr. McCormick. Check out Sierra Classics and Imports for your vintage car needs. Whatever you want, if we don't have it, we'll find it for you. We buy, sell, and trade. Sierra Classics and Imports. Save time and download the One Nevada app at onenevada.org slash app. Nearly two-thirds of fourth graders in the U.S. are struggling to read at grade level. We're partnering with Reading is Fundamental and our parent company, Sinclair for Sinclair Cares, supporting children's literacy. Scan this QR code to donate to our virtual book drive. The Vegas Golden Knights are now streaming on Fubo. Watch all the action, rivalries, and more. Streaming live on all your devices. Plus, over 350 top channels. Try free at FuboTV.com. This copyrighted broadcast is an exclusive presentation of Learfield.
This presentation. Back to McCauley Park. I want to remind you that Coldwell Banker Select is your official real estate partner of the Nevada Wolfpack. Contact the number one real estate company in northern Nevada for all your real estate needs. Pick up the phone and dial 775-688-4800. New pitcher on for the Rebels. Sam Simon will go the first six in this game. He gives up six runs on seven hits. All runs have been earned against Simon today. He'll give way to the right-hander, Albert Robles. For the Wolfpack, leadoff hitter Jesse Pierce will dig in, and he's having a day at the dish. He'll be the first to face Robles here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Breaking ball in there for strike one. We mentioned the lineup change today. Jake throwing Pierce out there in the leadoff spot and moving ball down to number two in the order. I'd say five of the Pack's six runs scored by those two probably worked out pretty well for the Pack so far. And Pierce laces one to left field through the 5-6 hole, and he's on with a leadoff single, his third hit of the afternoon. Might have to stick with us tomorrow. Those top two guys in the order right now are 5 for 6 with five runs scored and a home run and a walk. So I, I think I could make the first two spots in Nevada's lineup tomorrow. I could I could go I think, into my scorecard and lock those in right now. I, I, it yeah. could be a coincidence, but <laughs> coaches have been known to stick with what works, and I would say that lineup change has worked to perfection. Pierce has scored three of Nevada's six runs, and he's on to lead it off here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Robles throws that pitch low and outside for ball one. Sometimes just a different spot for whatever reason. Just guys just click a little better. No really rhyme or reason to it. but There's a ball lifted to left field off the bat of ball, and that one is long gone. That one bounces on the road beyond the left field wall. Nevada's put two more on the board, and it's now 8-4 to four in favor of the Wolfpack. That ball was crushed. How about seven of the eight runs scored today by Pearson Ball after that lineup switch? That'll work. Ball has just taken the team lead in home runs with his fifth of the year. He's also picked up RBIs number 23 and 24. That was a no-doubter. That one didn't need any wind. Never Never hurts, though. It probably helped get it to the road (laughs) out there. Never hurts. There was a car that came by right after it bounced out there. Good thing that car wasn't about three seconds quicker. Might have had a broken windshield. That pitch is going to be high to J.R. Freethe. He's one for three today with a double. I'm trying to remember. I, I want to say that it was either Matt Ortiz or Kevin Kuzminoff. I can't remember which one. As Freethe tries to check his swing, cannot. Falls behind in the count, one and two. One, I think it was one of those two guys. Might have been Andy Dominique, too. Hit the train one day. Train was going by out there, and that's well beyond the left field wall across the road. And they hit one that was absolutely crushed, probably on a windy day. I don't want to say that it was, but literally hit the train when it was going by in left field. Any one of those three guys had the potential for sure. I know, I mean, there were some boppers back then in that era from about the late 90s to the mid-2000s. They had some guys that just hit mammoth bombs. One to the count on J.R. Freethe. Here's the pitch. Fouled off. I'm still telling this story to this day about Matt Ortiz. Wolfpack's playing at Sacramento State. You're familiar with their field. Mm-hmm. So Parking beyond, garage over yeah, left field, is that right? Yeah, that's exactly right. That's mm-hmm. the right where I'm going here, and I'll tell you the rest of the story after the 1-2 to Freethe from Albert Robles, second pitcher used today by UNLV. Pitch is high, kind of evens at two. But the pack is playing Sa- uh, Sacramento State. I'm doing the radio for that broadcast. And Ortiz is at the plate, and he's got a 3-0 and count. Here's a 2-2 pitch. Swing and a miss. Ball in the dirt, and the tag applied to Freethe. He'll be the first out here in the seventh inning. And Taylor Holder will come to the plate. So he's got a 3-0 count. And you know Gary Powers is given the take sign in the third base coach's box. I don't, I don't know if anyone got a green light on 3-0 with Gary ever. And I'm not even sure that Matt even looked down there because he knew he was going to get the take sign. 
Well, their pitcher grooves the fastball, and Matt Ortiz hit a ball on top of the roof of the parking garage. Might be the longest home run I've ever. I'm mean, talking about the one that hit the train one year. That Matt's home run might have been the longest I've ever seen. It was, it was absolutely destroyed. He probably got benched after that. <laughs> Gary set him on the bench or what? <laughs> that pitch is going to be outside to hold her for ball one. Gary was yeah. old school like that. You oh, never I know. know. I know. No, never I don't know. think he benched him, but. Yeah, he hit it a ton. There were some students, I think, taking a break from class that afternoon. As there's a ball hit to left center field. That one is long gone. It's home run derby at Piccoli Park this afternoon. Taylor Holder with a solo home run extends the lead to 9-4 here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Crushed. <laughs> Something about the win, I mean... You know, there's there's wind aided and then there's just like maybe just wind gently shoved. You right. know, I mean, sure. there's some yeah. that are cheap shots that I would say as a pitcher, I'm like, oh, that wouldn't have got on a regular day. That ball was crushed for sure. But there's something about when this wind blows out to left that once it gets up there, it just seems to just keep going, just keep going up higher and higher and farther and farther, and you just kind of lose it and it's long gone. Teams have combined for six home runs in this game, and there might only have been one of those six. Zach, that needed the win to get it out, but the other five, of you're right. Just, whew. It still doesn't hurt. Thing was long gone immediately after it left the bat. Strike taken by Bryce Matthews. He's got a two RBI double in this game. Also picked up an RBI with a ground out back in the first. He's one for three with three RBI. Swing and a miss. You know when the flag pole itself is getting blown around? Not just the flag, but the actual flag pole yeah. is blown around in the wind. That's when you know it's a it's a pretty sturdy breeze. 1-1 one, one pitch. There's a hard shot. First baseman Krizik makes the play. We'll flip to Robles covering. And two are out against the Wolfpack here in the seventh inning. These are the days the lefties just get bummed out, you know. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. Lefty, it's the opposite. When you're over at Aces Ballpark downtown, the the field is oriented in a different direction. So the same wind is blowing out to right center instead yep. of due left. So you get days out there where lefties just start teeing off. And, you know, it's, again, same wind. It's only, what, two or three miles from here. But the, the field itself is oriented in a different direction. Here's Justin a call takes a fastball for strike one. That's why they have that uh, right center field gap at about what three thirty five or four thirty five something it's like that. It's in the fours for sure. Yeah, yeah, down by yeah. There's there's a deep right center gap, and it doesn't matter. Breaking ball is high to a call who is zero for two. He had a ground out in the first inning, sacrifice fly to right field in the third, and struck out to end the fifth. You wonder if those apartments that they built down there will change the wind a little bit that's a interesting point there's a swing and a miss by a call and it's one and two we're talking about this field playing differently as maybe buildings get built or fences get tweaked a little bit but they just built some not quite high rises but probably what four or five story buildings right next door to the ballpark fouled straight back by a call one and two it, it, it might you know, that's a good point it might nine ten and oh on the score line for the wolf pack four five and oh for the rebels they Pack out to a 9-4 lead here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Breaking ball. Fouled into the glove of Seeger, and that'll do it for the Wolfpack. They pick up three runs on three hits. Two of the hits were home runns. We'll go to the eighth inning, Nevada leading it 9-4. You're watching and listening to Wolfpack Baseball right here from Learfield Sports. We've been in the biggest little city since its very beginning. We brought clean water to our city's first buildings and homes, when that wasn't easy to do. As our city has grown, we've grown with it. Since 1893, we've been trusted to do the right things the right way. Whether it's delivering innovative ideas for the buildings, shaping our future, or making sure your leaky faucet leaks no more. That's the savage way. And it has been for over 130 years. 
for 40 minutes, I have to be locked in. I can't worry about my feet. I would always, you know, tape up and I always get retaped because my feet were hurt and nothing really was working. When I came into the Good Feet store and got fitted, I definitely felt the differences. Having the Good Feet support in your shoes just helps you not worry about your feet. I'm focused on the game, the task at hand. My goal is to have a long career focusing on foot health. Using this arch support long term is definitely going to add to that. Even if you're not an athlete, invest in your feet. Good Feet arch support can definitely change your life. Back to Don Weir Field at Holy Park here on a Saturday afternoon. Windy, blustery, a little bit cold. Six combined home runs hit between the two teams. They've been split evenly. Nevada's hit three. UNLV has hit three. And Nevada's got a new pitcher on the hill now as Theo Millis will go seven innings, give up five hits and four runs, all earned. He walked two, struck out four. And if you look at his lines, Zach, those three home runs he gave up were all solo home runs. So... Yeah, they're long balls. They do damage, but all solos, when your offense is clicking like Nevada's offense is clicking today, you can live with those three, I think. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, feel like today you go seven innings, four earned. That's a very, very quality start, um, you know, on a Saturday in conference play. I mean, you're talking about yesterday getting eight and two-thirds from your starter today, getting seven from your starter. I mean, that's a recipe for long-term success. We know yesterday was, you know, Nevada didn't get the win, but. If you tell Jake you're going to get seven, eight innings from your Friday and Saturday guys all season long, you will take that all day and, and have a lot of success as a ball club. Casey Burfield, a senior, 6'3", 180-pounder, out of Feather River Junior College, prepped over in Sparks here locally, will take over for Theo Millis here in the top of the eighth inning. He's got a 2-0 and count on the number nine hitter, Brendan O'Sullivan, and now runs it to 3-0. and For Burfield... His seventh appearance on the year, he's 1-0 and with a 142 ERA, which actually the team best 142, and he delivers a pitch out of the strike zone for a four-pitch walk to start his afternoon. Conclude Burfield's line, 12 and a third innings, or make that 12 and two-thirds innings. He has one save for the Wolfpack, has given up 14 hits, but only three runs, and two of those three have been earned. He has struck out 12, and with that walk issued, has issued six free passes this year. That pitch is taken for a strike to the leadoff hitter, Ryan Rylan Charles. Rylan three for five last night, one for three today. That one is out of play. Where he prepped at Bishop Minogue, that field's... Plays a little bit like this one. So familiar with the conditions here in northern Nevada. You guys probably faced each other in high school. There's a ground ball to the first baseman. Pierce tags the bag, throws the second. Tag applied. Double play for the Wolfpack. Well done. Three unassisted six on that double play, or three six on the put out and the double play. Two are out. For Chase Dittmar. I said it yesterday, Don, I'm, uh, and, you know, again, small sample. I've seen now just the five home games that the Pack has played. Their defense and their fundamentals have been just night and day from what we saw last year. First pitch to Dittmar is taken for a strike. Heard a lot of sloppy games last year, kind of mental mistakes, physical mistakes. I mean, it, it has been – Some very clean baseball games played, really by both clubs, but Nevada especially has played just excellent defense, you know, getting the bunt down, getting runners in. all Just all the kind of basic baseball things have just been very, very impressive. Dittmar pops it up. Started on the right side of the infield, but will end up in the shortstop's glove. Justin Nicole makes the catch for out number three. We go to the bottom of the eighth inning. For the Rebels, by the way, in the eighth, no runs, no hits, nobody left. Nevada leads at 9-4 as we head to the bottom of the eighth inning. You're watching and listening to Wolfpack Baseball from Learfield Sports. With a Chevy, you get more than just a vehicle you can depend on. A Chevy gives you the freedom to explore new roads, to push the limits, and go places you've never been before. So buckle up and get ready to enjoy the ride as you set off on new adventures. See where a new Chevy will take you at Champion Chevrolet, home of the hardest working cars and trucks in America. Discover the new Chevy experience at Champion Chevrolet. 
This is a Bradley Drenlin Janae personal injury attorney. He's in his office, right here in Reno. Unlike a lot of Vegas personal injury attorneys who say they have a Reno office, our attorneys actually live here. Nothing against Vegas, but we know Reno and how to win cases here better than any Vegas lawyer ever could. Bradley Drenlin Janae, the number one law firm for people who want to be treated like they're number one. I've mobile stage can elevate your concert speaker or special event book yours today at mms events unlimited.com and rise above the rest albert robles will go one inning and it's his era is going to elevate a bit one inning pitch three hits three runs all earned he ended up uh, striking out two not walking a hitter he gives way to reese lewick Talked about the lineup shuffle, Don. Top four. So yesterday it was Ball, Freethy, Pierce, Holder. Today it's Pierce, Ball, Freethy, Holder. So the top three jumbled around a little bit. Those top four in the order today, nine for 14. All nine runs scored. <laughs> okay, we can lock them in for tomorrow. I'm confident there won't be a change of lane, uh, lineup change from that point. Top one to four. We got nine of the ten hits and all nine runs. There's a swing and a foul at the plate by Derek Tenney. Now, I'm not the coach. Obviously, Jake McKinley is the one that turns the lineup in, but I'm with you. Coaches, they get a, a nice rotation and a batting order, and they produce like that. It's all right back to the uh, don't try to fix what's not broken. Yeah, I mean, it's it's some coaches are just – a little bit superstitious. Right. Uh, I don't think it's so much superstition. It's just like, again, who knows what it is about where you're at in the order that just changes maybe the way the pitchers look. You know, Pierce is a little intimidating presence as a leadoff hitter. I mean, you know, who knows what sure. it is. But it it definitely something flipped today, and the that top of the order has looked very impressive. Derek Tinney will swing and miss at a breaking ball. That's the third time in this game that Tinney has struck out. That leads it off for the Wolfpack here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Nevada on top by a score of 9-4, to four, looking to even this series at a game apiece. Rubber game tomorrow. If Nevada can hold on to this lead, we'll first pitch at 12.05. We'll be on the air at 11.40 with our pregame show as that ball off the bat of Josh Katakutan is into center field for a one-out single. He didn't wait around. For Lewick, by the way, looking at his numbers, he does not have a record on the year. He's making his seventh appearance. His ERA is 338. He's pitched just five and a third so far. Make that five and two thirds with getting it out here in the bottom of the eighth inning. For Lewick, six hits, two runs, both earned. He's walked three and struck out two on the year. But now we can even up that column at three with striking out Derek Tenney to start this ball game. Well, that one misses somewhere inside to Jake Harvey, and the count is 2-0. and On your NCAA men's basketball scoreboard, if you're all curious out there, if your bracket isn't busted already, you're one of very few that still have one alive. Two games final today. Gonzaga beats Kansas 89-68. Arizona eliminates Dayton 78-68 couple games in progress. I'll get to those scores after the 3-0 pitch to Harvey. He'll take that one for a strike. At halftime, North Carolina leading Michigan State 40-31. to And with about four minutes left in the first half, here's a score for you. Washington State leading Iowa State 21-18. Washington State a seven seed. Iowa State a two seed in the tournament this year for the men. Here's a 3-1 to Harvey. It's low and outside. Nevada's got a couple of runners out on now with one out here in the bottom of the eighth inning looking to add to their 9-4 lead. Here's Pierce. This first four in Nevada's lineup that Zach just talked about, kind of a killer's row today. Boy, he... 
He was going after a home run with that swing, was he not? I think that one's going to stay in foul territory and playable for the third baseman, Dittmar, and he makes the play, and Pierce will be out on one pitch, and I know he's disappointed with that because that swing was, he was looking for a three-run home run with that swing. Yeah, it wasn't just a tiny bit out in front of it. I mean, he still got a good swing on it, but first pitch, uh, curveball, slider, something like that, and, and he just... He was actually on it timing-wise, just a tiny bit out in front and popped it up. First time he's been retired today. There's a ball in the right field. Higgins will come in, make the catch for the final out, and that'll do it for the Wolfpack. Here in the bottom of the eighth inning, no runs on a hit. There are no errors and two runners left on base. Pack needs three outs to even this series at a game apiece. They lead it 9-4 to four going to the top of the ninth inning. You're listening and watching Wolfpack Baseball from Learfield Sports. Are you ready to upgrade your home? Look no further than Envision Glass, your full-service glass experts. Our team of expert professionals offer a wide range of solutions, from residential repairs to full installations to fit your budget with free in-home estimates. With Envision Glass, you can expect on-time arrivals, the highest quality materials, and exceptional workmanship. And installations are backed by our five-year warranty. Trust the full-service glass experts. Choose Envision Glass for all your glass repair and upgrade needs. Visit EnvisionGlass.com. Spring into savings all month long at Michael Hole Chevrolet GMC. Spring is the perfect time to trade in the old for a fresh new ride. And we've got the deals and trade-in values to make it happen. Right now, save up to $10,000 off MSRP on new 2024 Chevy Silverado 1500s. Or save up to $10,000 off MSRP on new 2024 GMC Sierra 1500s. For Northern Nevada's best deals on new trucks, spring into savings at Michael Hole Chevrolet GMC in Carson City. Shop online at michaelholegm.com. Hey, Wolfpack fans, the women's basketball team is hosting their third annual golf outing fundraiser presented by Greater Nevada Credit Union. It's going to take place on June 23rd at the Red Hawk Golf Club. For more information, please contact Shay Mead. Here's his email address. I'll give you a chance to get a pen and paper ready. Got it? Okay, here you go. Mead at unr.edu. That's S-H-E-A-M-E-A-D at unr.edu. Help support the women's basketball program and go out and whack a golf ball around Red Hawk for the day, June 23rd. Which course, though? I know. The lakes or the hills, right? Is that what those two are That's out there now? They used to be called. I'm assuming they still are, but that might sway me on whether I'm going to go or not. You know what my... Uh, I need to know which course, Don. By tomorrow? <laughs> I need to know. Okay. Probably both. You know what my uh, aunt oh. used to call that? I don't. My late aunt used to call it cow pasture pool. <laughs> that was like her. That. She said, you're going to go out and chase that little golf ball around and go play some cow pasture pool? I said, uh, it's pretty good. Isaac Rodriguez ahead in the count 2-0 and here to start the top of the ninth. That pitch is high and inside for a 3-0 and count as Casey Burfield is back out for his second inning of work, trying to put a capper on this one and close it out and make Theo Millis a winner. There's a fastball grooved for strike one. Speaking of the wind, that can really uh, affect that sport, too, when you're out there oh. messing around on the course up here in northern Nevada. When it's going left to right off the tee, I'm in big trouble. There's a pitch high and inside to Rodriguez, and he'll draw a walk to start the top half of the ninth inning. I'm in big trouble on a normal day. <laughs> People say, ask me, what is your handicap? I said, my club's. Yeah, it's a problem. What do you think? Yeah. Once you step on the course. My outfit, my hat, <laughs> it's all encompassing. There's a fly ball to deep center field. Katakutan going back and is not going to get there. That will bounce off the base of the wall. Headed for third in safely is Rodriguez in a double by Kate Higgins. We'll put runners at second and third with nobody out here in the Top half of the ninth inning, Nevada trying to secure this 9-4 win today, but now we'll have some work to do with a couple of runners on and nobody out in the top of the ninth. That's the sixth hit of the afternoon for UNLV. Here is Austin Krizik. Had that solo home run in his last at-bat. 
There's the pitch taken for a strike. He has struck out in this game, and again, we talked about it early, Zach. This is a hard guy to strike out. Started this series with just four strikeouts in 71 at-bats. He's now struck out in this series three times in six at-bats. Takes a strike and is down in the count 0-2. He's kind of wearing that... uh, if you watch, like, the NHL playoffs, the hockey players like to wear a big old bushy beard when it gets to the postseason. krizik has got a big old bushy beard. The 0-2, high and outside. In the count of one and two. I would think that would be tough playing hockey with a beard. I don't know why I see that. And I'm well, thinking, it's padding. It's, yeah. it's padding. It's a safety feature. Take a high stick. Yeah, for sure. 1-2, swung on and missed, and Krizik is down on strikes for the fourth time in this series. That matches all of the times he had struck out coming into this series. And that's a big out for the Wolfpack. See that pitch on our TV broadcast, low, that Krizik chased after, and he goes down. We're going to have a pinch hitter for the Rebels right here. Alex Pimentel, who had a pinch hit in last night's game, will come in and pinch hit here. He had a double in that plate appearance last night. He's trying to crack tomorrow's lineup, isn't he? That ball spiked out in front of the plate, blocked by Harvey to save a run. 1-0 on Pimentel. Pimentel, a transfer to this Rebel program from Long Beach State. Swing and a miss on a good breaking ball by Burfield. So at one point in time, he was referred to as a dirtbag. Now he's a hustling rebel. That's right. Swing and a miss. Count one and two. And by the way, I'm not disparaging him calling him a dirt big. That's what you call players at Long Beach State. That was a moniker given to them many, 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 many years ago. One two pitch. Swing and a foul into the glove of Harvey. He holds on, and Burfield is a out away from putting this one in the books. Second straight strikeout. Burfield did not like giving him that double to Higgins. He came back with the started. The stuff got a little nastier once he got runners on second and third. He's like, I want this game to end nine to four. Yep, does not want to give up runs. Here is Santino Panaro with two outs and runners at second and third. Another nice block by Harvey behind the plate to save a run. Rodriguez walked to start this inning. That was followed by a double by Higgins. Second and third are where the Rebels are right now. And that ball bounced out front. That'll be played by Burfield. He'll throw on to first. And that'll do it. Wolfpack will even this series. Line score for Nevada in this win. Nine runs, 11 hits. They do not commit an error for the Rebels. Four runs on six hits. They do not commit an error. For the Wolfpack, they improved to 9-11 and 11 overall. They are now... Five and three in conference play for the Rebels. They are now 13 and nine overall, and their conference record falls to three and five. Final score: Nevada wins at 9-4. Stick around; we'll be back with our post-game show after this. You're watching and listening to Wolfpack Baseball from Learfield Sports. I've seen it a thousand times. Insurance companies do everything they can to deny a claim. It's frustrating. That's why I made it easy. Text me anytime and get an answer. I'm local and have years of experience getting people like you fast and easy resolutions. Hi, I'm Jeff from the Companion Auto Group and we want to do what we can to make sure you never get the phone call you would never expect. A family member has been injured in a serious vehicle accident due to distracted driving. 58% of distracted driving accidents are caused by texting while driving, changing the radio station, or eating food. Pull over if you have to use your phone. Drive safe, Nevada. Here at Company Auto Group, our highest priority is keeping you safe, and we want to make sure that all your attention is on the road. When injured in an accident, Our job isn't just to be your lawyer. We move money from the insurance company directly into your pocket. We turn injuries into cash. 
Golightly and Vanna, 222-3333. The National Weather Desk covers America's weather now. 200 meteorologists provide valuable insight into the world of weather. Watch the National Weather Desk. You're watching Nevada Sportsnet. This segment is sponsored by LT Automotive. Before you hit the road to the outdoors this summer with your family, you can get all of your RV and car needs taken care of at LT Automotive. Come on in and see us. We'll take pride in your ride. Rivers are magical. Uh, the way they move and what they do, they're the, they're the arteries of the natural world. Welcome to Tributary Whitewater. We're a river outfitter located here in Lotus, California, offering a, a wide range of experiences from mild to wild. We offer uh, trips on over 22 sections of river. We have outposts in here in Lotus, Truckee, California, Maupin, Oregon, um, and all the way over to the Idaho border. Yeah, cool. We are just about getting there. Get out, boys and girls. As far as customer experience goes, this is the year to come rafting in California. Rock and roll, baby. Let's do this. Mm. We're going to be cruising about three miles up the road to where we're we'll putting on at the Highway 49 Bridge as it crosses over the South Fork of the American River. Um, this river is typically a pretty mellow flow. It's one of the most rapid stretches of river actually in the entire country. I think it's in the top five. Coming off this historic winter, ton of snow, that means a ton of water in the rivers. What does that mean for the rafting experience this summer with you guys? We're gonna have really high flows pushing way further into the summer than we would typically in an average water year. And that brings that class three level that we typically see this uh, on this river up to a strong class four. Let's hit it. Yeah. Training wheels are off. We're all refreshed. Got a nice lunch here at camp. We're all geared up for a 10 mile trip. Uh, what's this deal? It's nonstop big waves, big holes. I mean, it's pretty much like getting struck by a bolt of lightning. <laughs> Paddle ahead. Uh, we all remember how Satan's cesspool rapid went down. Lean it, lean it, lean it. Great job team, bringing me back into the water. Oh, yeah. Way to go. Ice, nice job. Well done, thank you brother. Way to, way to be a good, a good um, victim. <laughs> a, a good victim. <laughs> good swimmer, good swimmer. All right, we're not done either. Ha! Huh? Rivers have um, some new dangers when they're high that, that maybe people aren't used to or expect um, that aren't normally there. The fast moving water exceeds people's ability to to swim, not expecting the cold. Um, so having the right gear, wetsuits, and the right equipment, and, and again, an outfitter or guide service is critical to that. One, two, three, break. Nothing like the sounds of the river to lull you to sleep. What a crazy first day here on the river. See you guys tomorrow. <laughs>
My parents took me rafting when I was nine years old. There was a guide that day on that trip that, that cared enough and worked hard enough uh, to deliver a trip and an experience that changed my life. Um, and, and so I've kind of always just wanted to, to be able to deliver that same thing over and over again. Day two, going straight to the meat grinder. Not gonna lie, a little nervous after yesterday, but I got my boy Jason over here. Hey man, how are you feeling, man? I'm ready to rescue you again, dude. Ready to pull you right out of the water. The, the rapids at these at this level is just one rapid after the next. There's very little break in between the rapids. Not a lot of time to breathe. Like, ah, okay, let's go. Round two, like, um, and it's like that for miles. 